Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into the three most common camp stoves that are out there on the market. We're gonna be covering the pros and cons of all three. And if you guys already own a camp stove, be sure to watch this video and share it with your friends because I think what you're gonna find is a few of the things we're gonna cover may surprise you. If you're new and you do not have a camp stove, Come along with us and we're going to show you the pros and cons of all three going all the way back to the old school gas burning stove to the LP burning stoves that they're more common on the market today. So let's get to the video. Again, thanks for tuning in to Heartland Makes and Outdoors and we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right into these three stoves. We're going to start out with the biggest one on bottom and move our way up. All right, guys, we're going to start out here, and this is a Coleman, and it's actually model number 426C. It was made in Wichita, Kansas, and this one is as old as you would think it is. It's, it's going to be pretty dang old, but the one thing I do want to point out, you might be asking yourself, why would I want one of these old school camp stoves? Guys, if you've been to Walmart recently or you've been to Tractor Supply, those one pound bottles that we used to get for $1.50 each and it'd be, you know, sometimes as cheap as $2.50 or $3 for a two pack, they're upwards of $15 at Tractor Supply and around $12 at Walmart. But this runs on the old Coleman fuel and this camp fuel, again, these used to only be a couple of bucks, but they're now like 12 or 15 bucks. And I think we're going to have to kind of do some research this year and find out would it actually be cheaper buying these $12 gallons or buying those one pound bottles. I feel like I'm getting a lot more burn out of a gallon of that fuel than I am the one pound bottles. show you a few things that you should look for if you're looking to buy one of these old stoves I'll show you some things to look for that will help you with your purchasing decision the biggest deal on these burners you want to look and make sure that you don't have a lot of rust anywhere around in there and then the little piece back here which is your manifold that comes in and that's kind of what feeds the fuel to your different all three different burners if it's got some surface rust, rust on it guys that ain't no big deal but you do not want to get into a situation where this is kind of rusted over if you see one that's all rusted over the parts on these stoves are getting harder to find but again, if it's just surface rust, I've done a lot of videos in the past showing you how to remove rust. We actually found this in a flea market for 25 bucks. So I wasn't able to light it inside the flea market, but you can open up this valve over here, pump it up, make sure that your tank's staying pressurized. All right, so if you don't know and you've never used one of your grandpa's old stoves, this pump right here, about the only thing that can go wrong if you find one of these is this pump works kind of like a bicycle pump and occasionally that old leather or rubber will get kind of dry if you'll put a little bit of oil and there's a spot here at the top where it tells you to do it but you're going to put your thumb over this and we're going to pressurize the tank this doesn't take that long especially if you've been using it but your first time at camp anytime i'm traveling one of these i'll take this top off over here and make sure there's no pressure in there. You don't necessarily want to be taking it around with the pressure. Normally about 50 to 75 pumps if it's half full. If you fill it all the way up to the top, guys, you're gonna find it really, really hard to pressurize it because it's gonna pressurize real quickly. And then you're gonna to have to keep pumping it up throughout your cook. I've found for me, I'd rather have this tank about half full instead of completely full. That way you don't have to mess with it nearly as often because you can pressurize it and then just kind of leave it alone. Flames on. You can hear the gas. And then you want to leave that running for about a minute. We'll start our stopwatch. Give it a minute. Then after you get it lit, you just turn that little valve down and now you can adjust your flame higher or lower 
and ideally you're looking for the blue flame all that yellow flame is just wasted heat but you can see and and honestly the more that this stays going and it gets everything in the side of the stove heated up more you can turn that flame up higher we're going to go ahead and shut it off and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of this stove so real quickly in summary this stove some of the pros about it is absolutely huge just built like a tank these things were built to last a lifetime as a, as i've mentioned this stove here is probably over 40 years old you can tell i mean it's the stuff inside this is just built to last there's very few parts that could actually go wrong with an old stove as you can see even with a 10 inch cast iron skillet you could easily have a 10 inch cast iron skillet and a 12 inch dutch oven or whatever you wanted but that's one of the things that i do love about this stove is number one it's easy to fill the tank up one of the downsides to this stove is you do have to carry around a little filter or a funnel so that you can pour your gas in here because pouring it out of that into this tiny hole straight out of the can is going to be almost impossible carrying around a, a little funnel is not that big a deal the next thing about this one of the pros like i said it is huge because you've got so much cooking space you've also got a pretty large burner one of the things that i want to do a comparison on is actually the burner size if you can see this burner is three and a half inches so you're going to get basically three and a half inch flame which is a pretty good sized circle which isn't going to leave you with a hot spot in your frying pan or any of your pans for that matter because you it's a lot it spread out a lot more which helps heat this cast iron up back when they invented these stoves almost everybody was using cast iron it kind of goes hand in hand with cast iron cooking that you would use a stove that has the larger burners so that you're not creating hot spots and ruining your cast iron. One of the next things that I do want to point out real quickly, if you guys are actually camping and cooking in, in Oklahoma, for example, the wind is always blowing. These big wings on the side really kind of help hold your heat in instead of the wind blowing your heat away. And then also you've just got a lot, of, you've got a ton of space up here guys for setting your stuff. When you start talking about the cons of this thing, it's pros or some of its cons. This is a big stove. And if you're in a small vehicle like a Jeep, like a Jeep for example, this is a big stove to carry around with you. And I'll give you roughly the dimensions on this stove. This stove is roughly 29 inches long, 14 inches deep, and six and a half inches on the height. So again, this, this tank will store inside here, and then you could also potentially throw you a, a funnel in here. That way you've always got your funnel to fill up your tank. One of the other things that I do like about this stove is it's got these little feet. These feet, you just push this little bar in and then they go back up and that way you're still at that six and a half inch mark on your depth. But this just raises your stove up a little bit off of the wooden table. That way you don't have a fear of if you're cooking all day long like a slow cook, a pot of stew or something like that, you don't have to worry about this wood catching on fire if you are on a wooded, wooden picnic table or however you have this set up. I like that. There's going to be some airflow underneath there to keep the bottom of that from catching your table on fire, which is really a nice perk. Again, like I said, guys, these stoves are getting harder to find. But like I say, I picked this one up for 25 bucks. I don't think you can beat that price. They do have a two burner model. If you guys were cramped on space and I don't have a measurement on one of them because this one's a three burner but it is a little bit shorter so it might even be a foot shorter which may be one of those situations where it makes or breaks your your decision on whether or not you want one this big again like I say one of the huge things that i really like about this is it was designed to be used with cast iron skillets your dutch ovens and all that stuff these frames are heavy heavy duty they're made to hold that heavy cast iron up and these have been in use for for years now, decades, and they still work. So that's kind of the pros and cons to the old Coleman. Again, with the price of LP going up, that may be a, a better option down the road as far as fuel economy 
and what's going to make your trip a little bit cheaper. I will say this while we're talking about it, these older stoves like this, the way that they work is this is going to pump gas into this manifold and then it's going to come back down and as it heats up it vaporizes any of that liquid and turns it into more of a vapor so that it'll burn out of these burners. Why I'm telling you that is because it's a little bit important. If it's extremely cold out it may take you longer to get this thing up and running. As I mentioned when you're starting this you're supposed to put this valve up in the up position, leave it warming so that it's burning and heating these pipes up and the manifold up so that it can vaporize that liquid. When you put this down, you should start seeing a much cleaner flame. Now, again, one of the downsides on this, if it's extremely cold, these are a little bit harder to light than the newer propane ones. So if you're gonna, if you're in a huge hurry, this may not be the stove for you. If you've got time at camp and you enjoy camp cooking, you enjoy messing around with the cast iron stuff, I would strongly recommend looking and seeing if you can pick up one of these. And then like I say, you can store your gas tank right inside there, put this down. And then it folds up nice and com compact. <laughs> nice and compact for a huge metal suitcase. Again, like I say, these are a little bit heavier, they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit larger, but if you have the time and you want to mess with it, I think this is a great option. Don't overlook these cook stoves because they were built to last. They're going to run on the Coleman camp fuel. You're going to hear people tell you that you can run this stove off the kerosene. This is a cheaper bottle of kerosene that you can get at Walmart. It's again, it's a one gallon. And then this is your Coleman camp fuel. This is like five bucks. This one's like $12 now. I cannot get this stove running on this kerosene. People will tell you that it will run on kerosene. I'm just going to tell you, get some of this camp fuel. If you, if you buy one of these older units, get some of the camp fuel if you're trying to make sure the stove works. Because if you bought that $1 bottle or that $5 bottle and you can't get your stove to work at all, you're going to think that it's the stove. I don't know that all of them were ever designed to run the kerosene. I'm just telling you that I know for a fact they'll run on this Coleman camp fuel. Again, it's a little more expensive, but I think you get out of a gallon of this, you're going to get a lot more cooks in and cooking time then you are a couple of the one pound bottles. And with the two one pound bottles costing 14 bucks now at Tractor Supply, this even at $14, I think you're gonna get four times, five times as many cooks out of this one gallon than you would the two one pound bottles. Next up on the list is the Coleman, and this is a two burner propane stove. As you can see, it's much more compact, and this thing's been well loved and well used. <laughs> we'll go over some of the pros and cons of this stove as well. As you can see, it's designed for the propane bottle. It goes together real quickly, and you can tell by the size of this thing, it's a lot more compact. I'll show you how quick it lights up after you put a new fuel tank in. And we're lit. So you don't have to mess with the valve, you don't have to do any of that. You can get both of your burners going just that quick. Now one of the downsides to this old one, and I got this when I was 18 guys, my sister bought me this when I was in high school, and uh, I've been carrying it around ever since, and this thing you can tell it's, been <laughs> it's got some nasty stuff burn all over it, coffee spewed over it and everything else. So, again, some of the pros to this stove is that it lights up real quick. It runs off the LP bottles, which makes it really convenient. The downside to this one is we're going to start out with number one. You can look at the size of this burner. The size of that burner is right at an inch and we're going to say an inch and three quarters and that's giving it a little bit. When you set this on here, that inch and three quarters, i kind of show you, just as so you can get a visual reference. Well, it, that's actually convenient. My little tape measure is the exact same size. Right there, 
is an inch and three quarter. That's the exact same size as this burner. And if you can see this burnt spot over here, what has happened over time cooking french fries and stuff like that with this grill, you're going to, it's, I'm not going to say it's ruined this cast iron, but it sure didn't do it any favors. That's a lot of heat being pumped out in a tiny little deal. Just for another comparison, you can see this is like a, this is an MSR cook kit. And you can see that it's built about right. So if all you're going to be doing is heating up soup, coffee, that type of stuff, I think this is a pretty good route to go as far as a two burner stove. You can tell this thing's well loved, well used, and it's, it's been around for a long time. So I mean, it, it definitely works. But like I say, the big problem is if you enjoy cooking with the cast iron, this particular stove here may not be the choice that I would choose simply because the burner is so small and you're putting such a hot spot right in the center of that cast iron. It will jack it up a little bit and you can see, hopefully you can see that ring right here. That's from that being burnt out. I've had to re-season this thing almost every time when I get back from camping because it'll burn all your seasoning out of it. Again, it's a great stove and we'll go over real quick. I'm going to shut it down, give you some exact measurements and give you an idea of how much space you're going to need to store that thing. Real quickly on the measurements of this one, you're roughly four inches tall. It's 21 inches long and a little over 12 inches deep. Again, this thing's thin, it's small, it's lightweight. You can put that in the space that it would take up, a pillow would take up in your Jeep or if you're camping out of a small vehicle. That's a great little stove. It, it's Some of the pros about it, aside from it being light and easy and quick to carry around, it's real easy to get it started. Your propane, your propane hookup stores right inside here so that it's easy to get to. You don't have to worry about getting to camp and not having it. This metal is some kind of old aluminum. It is difficult to keep clean. The metal grate that goes in here is, again, it's just like the old Coleman stove. They're very heavy duty. They will hold up your cast irons and all that. I would not put a, I would not put a cast iron Dutch oven on this simply because this burner is so, so small. You're going to end up burning up your cast iron. And again, some of the cons, if we're going to talk about the cons, these propane bottles are almost $15 for two now. They're $14.50 at our local tractor supply, and they're like $12.50 at Walmart. That makes this a lot more expensive to run than it used to be years ago. When I was 18 and my sister gave me this, it was super cheap, and it was cheaper than buying the gallons. It was cheaper, way cheaper to go with these propane bottles than it was these old Coleman camp fuel back in the day when you could buy these so affordably. Now guys, I know that you can actually refill these. I'm not going to pretend you can't. But you also, if you start looking at some of the laws on refilling these, you can't cross state lines with them in a lot of different states. So we're not even going to talk about refilling. We're going to talk about if you just went out and you're new to camping and you're buying stoves, which one would I look at and suggest? That's why I'm giving you a rundown of the three different models that we've got. I've actually got one more that I'll show you as well towards the end of this video. All right, lastly, our last stove is this stove is made by Camp Chef. It's the Everest model. It again is a two burner stove. I'll give you the dimensions real quick. You're roughly 23 and a half by 12, so it's about the same size as the Coleman we just looked at, and it's about an inch taller because it's five inch instead of four inch. A couple of things that I like about this one, as you can see, the wings on this fold up. They're a little bit higher than that Coleman propane burning one, so it's going to hold your heat a little bit easier. The biggest thing and one of the most incredible differences between this stove and the Coleman is number one, I want you to look at the size of these burners. These burners are five inches, five inches around. So when you go and put your cast iron skillet on here, and you can see this stove's still big enough, you could actually get two of these 10 inch, maybe even a 12 inch and a 10 inch. I know you could get the 12 inch and the 10 inch, but that five inch circumference is from this side to over here. That's huge. So you're going to have a much more even cook 
if you're doing french fries, if you're cooking eggs and bacon, if you're doing any of that stuff, you're going to have a much better, more even cook throughout your entire cast iron. That's one of the benefits to the cast iron is it is a more even cook than some of your other smaller pots like the MSR. That's one of the other benefits, but even if you're using like the MSR or a coffee pot, it's covering almost the entire base of your coffee pot or this, I believe it's a, what size is that? Yeah, seven inch, seven inch MSR pot. Now, one of the next things that I want to show you, and this is a huge perk, because if you've ever got up early in the morning and you're trying to warm your tent up because it's cold and you can't find your lighter, watch this, guys. It's lit. It's got an igniter over here. You don't have to worry about carrying around the lighter if your lighter goes out. And then look how clean this flame is. I don't even know if you can see the flame. It is that clean. And then again, like I said, this thing is burning. It's burning so clean and so efficient. Your cook time increases because you can cook so much quicker on this because of that huge burner. So as far as efficiency and fuel efficiency, I believe in, with all my heart, this one's going to be a lot more fuel efficient than the Coleman. The main reason being you've got that bigger burner, you're going to have less cook time. And again, guys, that's one of the things that I really like about this stove. I mean, look at that. It's lit. It's going. Now, this stove's no different than anything else you're going to buy on the market as far as you can see there's a little bit of smoke because I have not had this side on. I've cooked my coffee over here. Go ahead and you can kind of see that little bit of smoke that's burning off. Get this at home, run it up, ramp it up, and burn off some of that stuff so that it's not filling your tent up with some of that oils and stuff that they pack it with for shipping. Next up, one of the things that we've talked about is these grates are, again, they're just as heavy duty on this Camp Chef as they are on the Coleman. And guys, I've, I've been using that Coleman stove, both styles of Coleman stoves I've been using since I was a kid. And I can tell you this much, my wife and I bought the Camp Chef, and I'm going to bring that out here in a second or at least take you inside and show you, but it's got the oven built in on the bottom. And it's made for camping. I use it in my wood shop. And the thing that I just truly, truly love about the Camp Chef is the size of these burners. And that's something that nobody's really talking about. But when you're trying to cook a meal, and it doesn't matter if it's, like say, bacon and eggs, doing french fries, doing pan fry skillets. When your burner's that big, guys, and you're heating up the majority of your skillet on one burner, it just, everything cooks so much better. You're not gonna have the burn spots and the raw spots. It's just gonna cook so much more efficiently. And the size of those burners are truly the game changer in my mind on this stove. Again, guys, just to kind of recap the three different stove models that we have here, you've got your old school Coleman three burner stove. You've got your newer Everest two burner and then an old Coleman propane burner. I don't think the video would be accurate if we didn't talk about price because that is gonna factor in as a pro or a con on all three of these stoves. This stove right now, you can pick it up at Walmart new, obviously not as beat up and used as this one. And I wanna say it's around $90. This stove here is probably the most expensive of the three. It's $150. And then this stove down here, guys, you can still find these at flea markets or whatever. Like I said, me and Angie picked this up for 25 bucks a couple of weeks ago at, the, at a flea market. So cost-wise, this one's going to be the most affordable than probably this one. And then obviously the Everest is going to be much more expensive. Now again, some of the pros to the Everest is it's got the larger burners. You've got the self-igniter. You don't have to carry around the lighter with you. And it's going to be a much easier and I, I'm telling you this from using the this stove with the oven attached to it I've used for almost two years now and these just cook so much more efficiently because of that much wider burner and you, until you've used a stove with that bigger burner you won't understand what I'm saying but I'm just telling you it takes three times as long to make a pot of coffee on this as it does this this old school has a large enough burner. It was designed for using with cast iron. 
Again, this is a big unit. It may be a con. If you're trying to travel around in a Jeep, you may need something smaller like this one or this one. Some of the advantage of your old school one, if you guys are in these areas where you may lose the power or electricity or something like that, or if you're like us and you like fishing and you want to go out and do a big fish fry without stinking up the house, you can do a heck of a good fish fry on this thing. And again, it's still going to be fairly affordable because the one gallon of fuel that you can buy for this will last a long, long time. It lasts a lot longer than probably four of the one pound bottles for the gas stoves. Next up, I like this one. And it's, it's I'm telling you guys, because it cooks so well. You can still do your fish fries on it. You could do fish fry, french fries, any of that. Any of your big cast iron skillets will still fit on here. Ultimately, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this isn't a great stove for what it is. For $80, $90, you can get this stove. It's small, compact, it lights easy. You do have to carry a lighter with you because it doesn't have any kind of self-igniting. But I'm telling you, I've cooked hundreds, if hundreds and hundreds of pots of coffee on this. I've made french fries. I've done any kind of cooking that you could think of on this camp stove and like I say up until I got one of the camp chef's cook stoves I thought this was the best stove on the market now if you're a type a good friend of mine him and him and his boys they love the macaroni and cheese and stuff like that these smaller burners you're going to get the hot spots you're going to get the scorched noodles you're going to get stuff like that if that isn't a problem then don't worry about it. Go ahead and get this stove. I think you'll be happy with it. If you are any kind of foodie at all, and you're not just making romaine noodles and coffee when you get to deer camp or fish camp or whatever kind of camping it is that you do, this stove will be great. If you like to experiment and play with food and that's part of your enjoyment when you're out camping, I'd strongly look at this. If you can fit this into your budget, I'm telling you, you're gonna be happier with this stove. If you can't afford this stove and it's not in your budget and you still are a foodie and you love cooking and you love messing around camp and making camp cowboy meals or whatever, see if you can't pick up one of these older ones. I think you'd be happier with it and the burner size on these. But again, it's hard to beat the convenience and the reliability of the old Coleman propane. I'll go on to say this, guys. If I could only pick one stove to have for the rest of my life, I'm, it's going to be I'm going to be torn between this Everest and this older Coleman, and it's for two reasons. Number one, if I was going to be stuck with a stove the rest of my life, I want one that I know I can cook just about any meal and not have hot spots, burns, scorches, stuff like that. The burners on these are just phenomenal. Again, the burners on these are phenomenal, and depending on how gas prices keep going over the next 10 or 20 years, it may be just as cost effective to have this one, and you know it's going to work. Either you do have to fiddle with it a little bit longer, it's not going to be quick and convenient, but I'm going to tell you what I'm taking to deer camp this year, and if that helps any of you at all, make up your mind. This camp stove up here is not going to deer camp. This camp stove up here, the old Coleman propane, I'm going to retire it. It's not going to deer camp with me no more. This Everest is what's going to be inside the tent. It fits on my table that I have. I have one of those collapsible little cook tables that you can have in your tent. That's where I'm going to make my coffee, I'm going to make my stews, and I'm going to make anything. If, if, the, weather's in, if the weather's bad, this will be inside. Two reasons. In the morning when it's chilly, I can throw my old trusty coffee pot. You can tell this has had hundreds of cups of coffee made in it, campfires and everything else. If you pot on there, and in the mornings when you're trying to warm up and knock that chill out of the tent, this will be the perfect thing. And then on the other end, where the, if you guys have watched our video on our, our canvas tent, the other end of the tent, I've got a wood burning stove, and then I've also got the buddy heater. So, Warming up the coffee on one end of the tent using this stove and then the buddy heater in the mornings because I doubt I start a fire in the morning unless I'm not going. If it's raining and I'm not going out to hunt or fish or whatever, I'll light that stove. Otherwise, if, it, if it's a nice day and I'm going to be leaving and I'm just trying to knock the chill out of the tent, it'll be this stove, the buddy heater. This stove here is going to camp with us also and this is what we're going to be using for the for the big group when we're making big large orders of french fries, that type of stuff, that's going to be an outside cooking stove for us. 
And again, guys, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that took the time to watch this video. I hope that this video has been helpful, especially if you're new to camping and maybe looking for a camp stove. We would love to hear from you guys. You guys that have been doing this for a while, tell us what your favorite camp stove is and why. Again, these are probably three of the most popular models that are still around. I know that there's a lot more out there. We'd love to hear from you. Put a comment down below. What's your favorite camp stove and why? And again, as always, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. And again, until next week's video comes out, check out one of our playlists. We've got a lot of fishing here in the deep east Texas, whether it be fishing from the bank, catfish, crappie. Guys, we're going to continue to add to our fishing playlist. That's something that we enjoy as much as camping. And again, until next week, I hope you all have a blessed week. And let's get outside and make something happen.